Hi, my name is Konstantin Magnus. In this Houdini tutorial, we are going to direct shortest paths through an arbitrary mesh. On the left side, you can see the most direct path, which is meeting up here at the furthest distance. Then in the second variant, you can see that we are adding a bit of additional cost using noise so it's not quite as predictable and then the third variant shows we are um, directing the paths on the outer surface as long as possible and then in the very last moment we're diving inside to meet the target so let's start with a new houdini scene and i'm going to use the template head as my reference mesh. It's uh, open on the bottom, so let's fill it with polyfill. And you can see these polygons are a bit distorted, so let's switch to quadrilateral grid, which has a bit of um, deformation, so let's just disable this so it's flat. And next I want to scale my ob object to unit size using match size. So we say scale to fit uniformly and we want to justify the Y. So the minimal vertical position will be sitting right on the floor. Next, we want to fill this um, hollow model because if you clip it, you will see that there's no, nothing our paths could grow on. There is no internal mesh there are no points, there's no volume, there's nothing our paths could walk along. So we need to fill this with TED Embed. TED Embed will place lots of tetrahedra inside. You can see this if you connect this to the clip node, that there are lots of three-sided pyramids inside now, and their size varies a bit. So let's define the max TAT scale to 0.03 and the outer surface has varying triangles and we will set them to the same value as well. So these are plenty of edges our paths can grow along so this would be something we can work with. I do not need the clip any longer this was just for demonstration purposes. So we want to define a few start points and also some random targets all the way through the tetrahedra points. So with a group expression, we can define a point group called start. And we would define this just based on the height. In a more sophisticated uh, setup, we could also refer to the bounding box, but I think it's sufficient to just say if you're slightly above the ground using the vector, the position vector, y component, um, smaller than a very small number, uh, this would be the start. And then we have an end group, which we can visualize best by disabling the start group for a second. And we will just use a preset called 30% chance and in order to customize this a little bit we will set the channel integer to seed so we get a slider for varying the endpoints and also the chance should be definable so you can just say channel flow chance so this would be like a percentage slider In case you would need more seed values, you could just dive inside the edit parameter interface and set their integer to a thousand and hit accept. But in this case, you will hardly notice. What's more important later on will be the density of the tetrahedra. So this value max tet scale is something you would want to either make smaller or larger depending on the structure you want. I'll keep it at 0.03 for now though. Next, let's 
use the shortest path node which is doing the main job so you would say from start to end and in case you're missing the start group just make sure we have activated it again so now we can say start to end and now it's just starting at the few start points we had and it's ending at the closest end it can find what we want instead is we want to go from any start to each end so we don't care about where we start but we should make sure we re re really reach each end and this is how we get this tree-like structure make sure to display the points so you can see that it's still a bit rough but it's doing the overall job Now what may be more interesting is how to make this smooth without having to calculate too many connections and this is usually done with the resample node. Especially if you set the length to a very small number and hit treat polygon as subdivision curves you will see that we now get a very smooth result. But something is worth noting which is there are many, many curves using the same edges. So this is why we get this bundled. See that? If we scale down the explode, you see that there are lots and lots of curves on top of each other. In order to filter them, you could use a fuse node. And a polypath depends on the look you want to achieve but generally speaking this will um, avoid having the same issue no so now you can see these are really individual pieces and the resample node is still making sure this is looking smooth but please feel free to experiment with um, not fusing it or not using the polypath as the results will differ I think I will keep it on for now and I would like to add some interest. We want to put a hole in there so we go all the way back to the tetrahedra and ask for their distance to let's say a line which is going horizontally through the head. So let's set the direction accordingly, step back by a unit and double the length and we will just position it a bit upwards so it's going right through and if you want to have it horizontally from left to right you would just switch values. Now you could simply say distance from geometry and it should return a distance for each point which is treated, treated as a tetrahedra or the other way around. The tetrahedra are um, basically displayed as points. So in order to blast them, you would just put points as the group and say add dist smaller than a certain threshold. And in this case, I will use 0.15. So that way I have this hole. If we now connect it back to our group node, and all the others, we get this structure. And now what's interesting is it's using the shortest path, but it's doing this in a mathematically perfect way. So they all end up in the furthest distance, or at least some of them, and we get this gap. Now in order to mix this up, you could go back before the shortest path and mess with the point cost attribute. So this is or can be an additional attribute. I will just use an attribute noise for that and set it to float and call it cost path. So this can be set to zero centered so it can be plus or negative. The amplitude and the element size are what uh, is most interesting. If you want to visualize this quickly you could set it to CD for a second and just activate the node so you will see that the amplitude is basically the strength 
and the element size is the frequency. So this would be, I think, chaotic enough. And I will put the name cost underscore path in it again. Now see what the find shortest path is doing when I paste this cost underscore path. And all of a sudden, it is getting mixed up. It doesn't really have uh, or it has additional costs. So it has to choose different paths. This is way too extreme, so you would reduce the amplitude. So that way it would be more similar to what we had before. Um, not quite as chaotic, but still really mixed up. Now this is not what we're going to use in the end. What I found or find more interesting is the distance towards the initial surface. So just like before, we are going to use a distance from geometry node and refer back to the match size where we had the unit size mesh, this one. Maybe I display it like this. And the distance from the tetrahedra to the mesh is now stored as this, and I can call this dist SRF for surface. That way we do not overwrite the old attribute. Now the distance to the surface ranges from minus 0.2 up to 0.1. And this is something we should remap with an attribute remap. Of course, this is not procedural, but for the time being, we could say minus 0.1 up to positive 0.1 and we want to change the output or to have a bit of an easier way of changing it we will use the ramp and set this to um, well I think it's sufficient to keep it that way we don't need the ramp actually just flip it from 1 to 0 now this attribute is the dist surface and instead of using the noise we will just tell the shortest path to use this and now you will see that all the paths are running on the outside and in the very last moment they will dive in so especially once it's resampled this will look uh, quite interesting i think and Again, if you want to change the resolution later on and want this to be denser, we can still refer back to the TET embed. Now, what's still missing is a way to affect the thickness of these paths. So we should use the curve view attribute in there and map them to a point scale. So we hit attribute remap and say curve view will be turned into p scale. So curve view is an attribute that starts at the beginning of a curve with a zero and goes all the way up to one. And now the p scale can be used inside either a sweep or in a VDB from particles. So this is using or multiplying on the p scale attribute and we should of course set the mapping to a very very low value reverse it and lift up the tip now we need a very high voxel resolution to actually see the tips and make sure to activate the shading so this is where the curves currently start and end so you see the poly path is basically splitting up these curves, which is something we do not want in our case. We want them to start all the way at the beginning. We do not care about them running twice or three or four times at the same edges. We rather want them to run all the way from start to finish. Reason they are not appearing in the end is because the voxel field cannot cover them at the moment. So you could change the minimum radius to one and also make sure that the voxels are small enough to display these points.
this plays together with the point scale, so if you make this slightly larger, then we'll have a better chance of coming through here. Also, the resample node should be really, really fine. I don't think it takes too much performance, so that way now our model is more complete. Now let's experiment with the density. You would go back and say, Ted embed. Let's see what it looks like when we make it smaller. Now there are more edges and potentially more ways of getting from A to B. And also the outer surface should get more detail if you like. It's not necessary. So this is what it looks like now. And this right now is a voxel model. So there are ways to shade this, but the usual way would be to convert it back to a polygonal mesh. So we'll get lots of triangles and also the model is not triangles, but these uh, quads. And um, <clears throat> you see it also shrunk a bit. If you would like to compensate for this, because otherwise you may lose some detail at the tips, then you could add a bit of ISO value there and then the sign distance field that used to be this uh, voxel model will be interpreted a bit differently and the ISO surface shifts towards the outside. Now, depending on your use case, it makes sense to remesh the entire model. I do not connect this node. I will instead first set it to a very low edge size. Also make sure to save the file. So you would just call it <clears throat> maybe growth or whatever you would like to name it. And now let's connect the quad mesh to our hopefully triangulated remeshed version. You can see here it will take a while. Um, for prototyping I would suggest you always work on the VDB from particles node so that way you can judge the output and then only when you're finalizing it you would look at the remeshed version. All right, this is uh, my model. And um, there were also discussions about how to texture this. So you could, would usually refer back to the input curve. So you would use the curve view attribute as U component. And the angle this outer surface has towards the input curve would be the V component. So that way you can get texture coordinates. I will put a link in the description where to find a VEX snippet for this or a, sh a shader solution for Mantra. But for the time being, this would be it. And thank you for watching.